Let's take a look at defining and configuring server groups and servers. This is a typical customization that you would make in your infrastructure if for nothing else to implement your naming convention, but it might be to make meaningful changes into your specific implementation. First, let's talk about server groups. Server groups are a way of grouping together server instances so that we can share configuration information uh, across those server instances. In domain mode, every server must belong to a server group. Server groups are defined in domain.xml because that's related to server configuration, so we define that at, at the highest level. The individual servers, however, are defined on host XML for the machine that that server instance is going to run on. A profile, if you remember, is a set of subsystems and the configuration for that subsystems and server groups are assigned a profile to be used for all of the server instances in that group. And then applications are not deployed to individual server instances, they're deployed into server groups in domain mode. Let's take a look at what that XML would look like. Once again, this is a validated schema, so your XML must be syntactically correct, but this is what the schema supports. So now we've finished building out our domain and we have something that looks like this. We have a domain controller, two host controllers. On host number two, we have server one and server two. On host number three, we have server three. Server one is in the main server group. Server two and three are in the other server group. Server one is receiving HTTP requests on port 8080, 8230 for server two, and 9080 for server three. Well, this is using the out-of-the-box naming conventions, and at minimum, you might want to change these names to reflect uh, your naming conventions in your organization. So what we're going to do is a series of exercises where we're going to customize this, and what we're going to do is get rid of these servers and replace them with three new servers. And we're going to have production, I mean, uh, dev server one, we are going to have production server A and prod server B. And we're going to get rid of these server groups because there really is no contextual meaning to main and other we're going to replace those with a dev group and a prod group. And that makes more sense to be able to say, oh, this is a development server for the developers to stage their code. This is a production group where we're actually running the real instances of our applications. And then when I create a new server, I decide whether it's a production server or a dev server, and I just assign it to the proper group. So that's the changes we're about to make in our infrastructure. And I've just created a new server group. I will add another. And in this instance, this is going to be my production group. And my production group is going to use the HA profile, because assuming in production, my instances are going to be running in a cluster where my development environment is just going to run standalone. So. No need for clustering capabilities there. What are the socket bindings that go with the HA sockets, uh, HA profile? It is HA sockets. 
and we'll save that. So now I have created two new uh, server groups. I can verify that this change has taken place by going into my configuration files for machine one. And let's look at our domain.xml. And server groups happens to be the last section. So when I go down to server groups and look at that list, we can see that now I have four server groups listed. I have my main server group, my dev server group, production server group, and other server groups. So now I have four server groups and I'm capable of creating a new server instance and assigning it to any of those groups. So that concludes the exercise in creating new server groups. Next exercise, we will be creating new server instances and assigning them to a appropriate group.